welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where my holiday is over. I'm back on my normal computer, so we should be good to go. And I hope the, the audio quality, at least, is up to snuff. Um, what have we got for you today? Well, a variety of things, actually. We've got this puzzle, which is by Easily Amused. Uh, I think it marks Easily Amused. That's very difficult to say. Easily Amused's debut on the channel. Uh, it's called Palindrometers, and it has a very in unusual rule set, which I shall read to you imminently. Um, but before that, a couple of things to mention, three things to mention. Firstly, thank you so much to those of you who have commented on the picture that we posted um, uh, recently on our Twitter and our Instagram feeds of Mark and I meeting in real life for the first time, well, since COVID. Um, so this was a few days ago. Uh, we met on the south coast of of the UK, of England, and you can see Mark looking very happy, me looking very happy, Maverick nowhere to be seen, and uh, well, some of the comments or the captions suggested were very funny. I think my favourite one so far was Pink Floyd Reunion, uh, but there was lots of stuff about naked singles, striped polo shirts, and the fact that we have legs, apparently. And we do, look, there they are. Um, what else? Uh, well, do have a look. It's, it's just gone past the start of the month, and that means we have a new reward for you over on Patreon. If you're a patron of the channel, we've got a whole heap of thermo sudokus created by Grockles uh, in a pack called Heat Map. Uh, 10, 10 thermo sudokus in all to be solved, and I think something like two or three hundred of you have already managed to solve all of them, which is phenomenal, and the feedback's been grand. Um, now, last thing I want to mention before we do Sudoku is a book I read on my holiday. It's this one. Hopefully, you'll be able to see that. It's called Maths Tricks to Blow Your Mind, which is a clickbait title of which I heartily approve, and it's by Kyle Evans. Uh, and I know Kyle because he got in touch with me to have a chat about the Miracle Sudoku. And there is, in fact, a little blurb about the Miracle Sudoku at the end of this book. Um, but we don't, by the way, we don't get paid to uh, promote uh, things like this. Um, we do it because we actually enjoy it. And I really did enjoy this book. It took me two days to read it and I flew through it. And I thought I might even share a couple of things from the book, which sort of specialises in, you know, you know, on Twitter, when you go there, often there is a, some sort of viral maths problem. When some of them are very annoying, um, normally around adding up the value of fruits, um, but some of them are really quite clever. And um, this book specialises in, in a lot of the clever ones. And let me show you what, for example, this puzzle here, which I think this is this is on the border of annoying versus clever. Some of you will love this. I loved this. Some of you will be intensely irritated by it. So solve carefully 230 minus 220 times 0 0.5. So immediately you think yeah, this must be some sort of bod mass problem. Some people who won't understand that you have to do the multiplying before the before the minusing. Uh, and this statement at the end, you probably won't believe it, but the answer is five. How can the answer be five? And there's no, there's just no way you can get five. Or is there? 220 times 0 0.5, well, that looks like it's 110. 230 minus 110 looks like it's 120. And indeed, the answer is 120 because five factorial is 120, five times four times three times two times one, which I know, I know it's naughty, but it did appeal to me. I think that puzzle was actually created by Ed Southall. I hope I'm not misattributing that, but it did make me laugh. Now, the other thing I'm going to attempt to do is to talk about another puzzle I found in the book, which I really did love, and I've now lost my page for it, which is typical of me. It's number 49 in the book. And basically, um, I'm gonna try, what am I, how am I gonna do this? I'm gonna use paint. I'm going to try and use paint. Now, this, this this will not work, but I will try and do it. So there are a variety of things we need to do in order to fulfill the, the question. Question 49, we need to draw a square. Freehand is fine. It doesn't need to be perfectly accurate. Well, that looks like roughly a square to me. Put a dot anywhere in the square and join it to the four corners of the square. Again, freehand is fine. So let us place a dot. I can do that with a circle, can't I? Oh, that circle is far too large. Let's make a slightly smaller circle. We'll make it blue and we'll make it tiny, 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 tiny. And I've got to move it. I'll move it to here. OK, so this is where I'm going to select my dot to be. Hopefully you all approve of that. That's obviously the optimal place for a dot. Oh, and I've got to join it to the sides or the corners of the square with lines. OK, let's do that. Boom, boom, boom. Um, 
Yeah, you're going to see how inept I am at this now, but I will do my best to do it quickly. Boom, boom, boom. That looks like it's roughly in the right place. Uh, this one, I can move that one to the corner. There it is. And one more. Come back. That one. That one can go down there. So there we go. We've done the second second part of the shape or second part of the task. Now, your square should now be split into four triangles. Yep. Shade two alternate triangles, i.e. two triangles that do not share a common edge. How much of the, sh the square is shaded? Right. So I think that what that means is that we can either we, we can either choose this triangle and this triangle or the top triangle and the bottom triangle because those don't share an edge. Now I should be able to fill these, I guess. Can I do that? Is that going to let me? Oh, it does. There you go. So let's choose those two. So how much of this of the overall square have we now shaded light gray? That's that's the challenge that we have to work out. And this is a really really beautiful problem because there are a variety of ways of working it out. In fact, there are three, I think. The first way would be to do it sort of longhand mathematically by drawing, uh, I don't know, a horizontal line. Oh, whoa, not like that. I didn't mean to do that. I want to just draw a horizontal line. Hopefully it'll let me this time. Boom, 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 boom. Let's draw a horizontal line across there. I don't know, slightly misplaced that. I need to think it needs to be slightly higher and a slightly different color so we can tell. There we go. So that's one. We could have drawn this horizontal line. I think that's, is that playing with my eyes or is it not horizontal? I have a feeling it's downward sloping. I'm going to get rid of it. I don't like it. Sorry, 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 sorry. I'm going to try and do one that's actually horizontal. I think, no, is that horizontal? How can I not see whether that's horizontal? That is appalling. That looks horizontal to me. I think it's the color. I think if the color was different, I would know for sure whether it was horizontal. We'll make it blue. Does it look horizontal now? Yes, I'm going with it. Uh, and I'm going to draw another horiz. Oh, and now I'm going to draw a vertical line. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. Does I don't think it has to be exact this. OK, there we go. And what we could do now is we could sort of label this A and this B, and we could note that we could work out the areas of the various triangles we've drawn. We could, we, we've got, we've constructed lots and lots of right-angled triangles by drawing the, the blue lines in, and we could calculate the areas of the light gray, the areas of the dark gray, and compare the two. That would be the sort of strict mathematical way of doing it. But what I loved about this problem is a sort of a vis there's a visual way of doing it once we've divided the grid up with the blue lines, because the blue lines now have divided our overall square into four rectangles. I don't think anyone would deny that. And if we look at each of those rectangles and think about them, the, the sort of the lines that made our triangles are dividing each of these rectangles exactly in half. So if we look at this top left rectangle, you can see this line here is dividing, is, is joining the two corners of the rectangle. So it must be dividing it in half. It's a straight line. So we know that the light gray and the dark gray occupy exactly half of the top left rectangle. And that logic applies to each rectangle. In other words, the gray, the light gray, and the dark gray must be the same area. Isn't that a beautiful visual trick? I thought it was anyway, and I wanted to share it with you. But Kyle notes there's even a uniqueness trick here because of the way the question was phrased, which, it, which the question was phrased as take two alternate triangles. So you either take the light greys or the dark greys and find and what is the area. But the question didn't sort of say, it didn't tell you which of those two to take. So that implies the answer is the same in either case. Now, if the answer is the same in either case, it can only be, the answer can only be a half. So by uniqueness, we could have told the answer was a half without even doing anything at all, which is, again, rather lovely and sort of has redolence with the world of Sudoku. So forgive me for muttering on about that, but I thought you might be interested. I enjoyed the book and I wholeheartedly recommend it. It doesn't take long to read and it's enjoyable. Um, anyway, all that said, let's get back to Sudoku and look at Palindrometers by Easily Amused. And I'll read you the rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits separated by a knight's move in chess cannot contain the same digit. Right, let's just remind ourselves what that means. So if this was a one and it was a chess knight, it could jump to a variety 
of different cells. All of those cells could be reached by a knight's move and therefore none of these cells could contain a 1. So don't join cells that are the same digit with knight's moves and you'll be good to go. In cages, digits must sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage. So that's normal killer rules. Oh, I see. And we've got no stipulation here about them needing to um, not repeat digits because all of the cages that we've got in this grid are in the same boxes of their Sudoku. So they will automatically, automatically, we won't be able to repeat digits in cages. The inequality sign, that must be this one, points to the lower digit. OK, so that cell's got to be lower than this cell. Um, the green lines are palindrometers. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Digits along a palindrometer must increase from the bulb. So that's normal thermom thermometer. <laughs> so that means along this line here, whatever we put in the bulb has to be lower than whatever the next digit is. So we could do it something like that would be a valid way, I think, of filling that thermometer element of the palindrometer. But digits along a palindrometer must also read the same forwards and backwards like a palindrome with the bulb acting as the center of the palindrome. So what this means, I think, is that we have to think about this overall line as a palindrome, the center of which is the bulb. And it has to read the same in both directions. So this we could write 9, 8, 7, 5 in here. So that now if we start at this square, 9, 8, 7, 5, 3, 5, 7, 8, 9, it reads identically to if we go from this side, 9, 8, 7, 5, 3, 5, 7, 8, 9. So it is a palindrome now, as well as sort of being a thermometer when we think about the bulb. So I think that's what we have to do with the palindrometers. Very interesting idea indeed. And yes, the puzzle is shouting Fistimavel at me, in case you were wondering. But do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, yeah, I mean, it does look like there's something fistimafel esque going on here, doesn't it? So Fistimafel, of course, is the theorem requiring those squares there. There are 16 red squares I've just highlighted, and they will contain the identical digits to these two by twos in the corner. Um, now, what have we got? Oh, 30, 69 plus those. Okay, I can't immediately see how to use that. So I'm not going to go about proving Fistimafel at the start here, but we probably will at some stage need to because I imagine that must be a way into the puzzle at some point. Um, 30 cage in four cells has got to be six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, knight's moves as well. Sorry, I was forgetting knight's moves. So I'm just wondering about the palindromes. So the palindromes, we know those two squares are the same. We know these two squares are the same. We know those two squares are the same. We know these two squares are the same. The same is true there. So whatever's in those two squares couldn't go in those squares in the middle box or that one or that one by knight's move. So these two squares go into one of those two squares in the middle box. Oh, no, 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 no. Those two squares. Right, here's something interesting. Where do those, whatever goes in those two cells, let's highlight them. Where does red go in box nine? It must go in the 30 cage because because red is in both of those cells. It's pinched out of the, that little R shape. And the same is going to be true of those two squares. And those two squares and ah, yeah, OK, right. I, I missed this right now. I understand. So what we can say at the start is that these squares and these squares, because these are always mirror digits, because that digit is always mirrored down here, this digit is always mirrored here because of the palindrome nature of the lines, none of these squares 
can go in any of those squares in box 9. So this foursome here and this foursome here are forced into the 30 cage and therefore they are the digits 6, 7, 8 and 9. That's really beautiful. That's really beautiful because it's not obvious. Um, or at least it wasn't obvious to me. Now we can probably now turn our attention to the thermometer element of the palindrometer. Um, yeah, because that square can't be a 6. Because this square would need to be less than 6. So that's not 6. The same is true of that square. Similarly, that square and that square. You can never put a 9 partially along a thermometer. You can never put an 8 here. Because this would be 9 and this would have to be 10. This can't be 7 because this can't be 6. Um, now, is that as far as we can go? Or can we improve? So if that's 6, it will still be... Mm, OK. And can we do anything with these two? These two have to live in the 21 cage in box 1. Oh, yes. OK. OK. Here we go. Yeah. OK. This is really interesting. The same thing that we've got going on with the red. So we know that red here lives in red there. But we've got something similar, I think, going on with the 21 cage regarding this palindrometer. Because, because those two squares are the same, those two squares are the same, and those two squares are the same, they rule themselves out, look, of all of those cells in box one. So these four squares and these four squares live in those squares. Um, I'm not going to be able to... Hopefully that's fairly clear. So blue lives in... Well, blue, blue is equal to 21. So if that's a 6, 5, 4, 3, you're not going to get... This is not 6, and it may not be able to be 7. It's definitely not 6. If that's 6, the maximum value of these squares is now 5, 4, and 3, because we've got to make sure we keep... You know, the, the, the thermometer increases as we go along it. So 6 would be the highest digit on the thermometer. 3, 4, and 5 only add to 12, plus 6 is 18. 18 is not equal to 21. Ergo, this is not 6. Um, now we might be able to get rid of 7 as well that's not 6 either now if this is 7 uh, 6, 5, four, uh, that would that would work oh yeah well well it would work if this could be a 6 but this can't be a 6 because I've now got a 7, 8, 9 triple in column 7, which I think means that those two squares are the only places for 6s on their palindrometer or, you know, on the thingies. Um, and that means that can't be a 6. So if that can't be a 6, the maximum value of these is 12. Oh. Ah, uh, okay, well that's true. Then, no, that is true. If that's 7, this has to be lower than 7 and can't be 6. So these have a 5, 4, 3 maximum, which is 12, plus 7 is 19. So I can rule 7 out of here as well. But I was just thinking about whether or not this could be a higher digit, and that might be possible if this is not a very low digit like 7. I mean, I know 7 isn't a very low digit, but it is in the context of the digits 7, 8, and 9. So this is not 7. And that means that's not 7. Now I've got an 8-9 pair and I get some 7s on my palindrometers. But what I was thinking about as well is whether this, if this is 9, could this be 8? 9-8. 17. So these two would have to add up to 4, which they can't. Okay, that's interesting. So if this is 9, you can't make this an 8. Because, in fact, it can't be a 7 either, I've just seen. Whoa. So, anyway, let's, let me stick with my chain of thought, or the, the, the train of thought that I was having. If this is 9 and this is 8, 17 here, in, we know blue equals 21. So this would have to be a 3 and a 1 
in order to make sure they're not the same digit, and that would have to be a zero, which is impossible. So if this is nine, you can't put eight here, you can't put seven here, and you can't put six. Oh, this is it, right, here we go. So this is nine, I think, and the reason it's nine is that this digit simply cannot be higher than five. And if it can't be higher than five, the maximum those squares has to have, have to be is 12. And if I can't make them higher than 12, I always need this to be a nine in order to make it add up. So we are off to the races here. We've got digits flying in round the Fistimafel ring. And now we know those squares, the blue squares, are a three, four, five, nine quadruple. We know this square is a one or a two. That square is not restricted. We've probably got stuff going on in this box with knight's moves. Um, the seven cage down here can't be three, four or two, five now. So that's one, six. So that is two. Which means those two squares at the top are seven and eight to complete column three. Which means these two squares are one and six to complete box one. Those two squares are seven and eight to complete row three. Now we've got. Now we can use the secret. Now we can use the secret on those digits. The secret, of course, is that any complete box, any complete row, or any complete column of a Sudoku adds up to 45, because it will contain all of the digits 1 to 9 once each. So, 9 plus 7 plus 8 is 24, plus 18 is 42. So those little two squares there, they must add up to 3 to make the whole box add up to 45. And the only way of doing that is with 1 and 2. Those squares are 3, 4, and 5. Those squares are 1 and 2. We've got weird things going on. 1, 2, 1, 2. It's almost like Fistimafel geometry. I don't quite understand how it's working, but we keep getting these pairs offset around the grid. 7, 8 goes to 7, 8. These squares are three, four, and five. Oh, knights, don't forget knights moves. Five can't go there. Four can't go there because of this four, five pair there. Um, this, oh, six, this six sees that square by knights move. Always approach uh, knights moves puzzles with trepidation because I think they yield maximum opportunity for me being shouted at. Um, right, these add up to 18 and they must be 3, 4, 5 and 6 just by Sudoku now. 5 can't go there. And we can... What do we do now? <laughs> um... We've got our inequality sign down here, but that's probably just going to be used at the very last moment of the puzzle in order to disambiguate it. These squares. Oh, now I see what's going on. I see what's going on. Well, those two squares are very restricted anyway. I think these cells going around the grid are going to be worth investigating now because I've just looked looking at these two in fact we know what these two are because look at this we've got a one two pair here well this one two pair means the neither of those squares can be a one or a two if you try and put one in either of these squares you'll rule one out of both of those two squares because of the knight's move constraint so these two squares can't be 1, 2, or 7, 8, or 3, 4, 5. That's seven of the digits eliminated. So I think we're left with 6 and 9. And if we are left with 6 and 9, we've got an... Oh, goodness, I'm misclicking all over the place. This 9 here means this square's got to be a 6 because of the knight's move. Which means 9s aren't living in those squares anymore. 6s aren't living in these squares anymore. 
and probably what we just need to do is to go round the grid although I'm just wondering about six in the middle box now yeah where does six go in the middle box it's a good question because this six rules out that one and that six rules out that one six goes here which means six goes here, which, oh, this is gorgeous. Six, 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 sign of the devil. Damien Omen has made an appearance. That's a six, that's a one. Uh, his surname wasn't Omen, was it? It was called the Omen, and his name was Damien. But his surname in the film is now going to bug me for the rest of this video. Damien... I'm not going to remember. That's very annoying. Um, right, get your head back on Sudoku <laughs> and stop thinking about the name of the character in The Omen. Um, right, we've just got some sixes. We've got some one. Ah, one maybe in this box has to be in one of those two squares, I think. Um, I'm just wondering if we can do any more knight's move trickery on the middle box. Well, especially the central square, you know, because the central square, if you can't put three, four or five in here, if you try and put three in, for example, it rules itself out of that square. So you can't put three, four, five, six, seven or eight in the middle square of the grid. So it's got to be a one, two or a nine. Oh, no. Oh, that's no, a nine. It sees nine. This is a one or a two. I don't know. There might be a way of learning more about that. Not sure. I think these two look the best to look at now because I've noticed this domino doesn't actually... Oh, no. Hang on. Sorry, I'm jumping around all over the place here because I keep changing my mind about where I might see a weak spot. I was about to malign this domino as being difficult because I don't know what this domino is. I don't know whether it's a 3-4 pair, a 3-5 pair or a 4-5 pair. But let's change our minds and actually look at this square because this square sees all three of those squares by knight's move. So this square... Is, is a naked single. Good grief, it's a two. And it's a two because you can't put one in it. That would rule a one out of the seven cage. You can put two in it. You can't put three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine in it. So it can only be a two. And that gives us a central square. Now perhaps we look at the rest of column five where we need three, five, and eight. That's a five naked single. It sees three and eight. Where does eight go in the middle column? It goes here now, so that's a three. Three rules itself out now of those two squares by knight's move. Gives us a three here. That's a five now. This is a four, and we are cooking with gas. Ah. Um, now, keep going. So now I know what those squares are. Those squares are two, three, six, no, two, three, seven, and eight. Two, three, seven, and eight. I can't put two there. Um, I can't, in fact, well, yeah, in fact, where does two go? That's a good question. It can only go in the corner, which doesn't get a song because it's not three. Uh, that's not three either. Oh, not three, just by Sudoku. Um... Hmm, okay. Now I'm stuck. What do we do now? <laughs> Where is the next best place to look? Is it those two? Maybe it's just simple. Maybe we're meant to look at those two squares, which can't be one, two, and can't be six, seven. Oh, actually, yeah, hang on. These squares are limited, aren't they? They can be three. They might be able to be five, I think. And they might be able to be nine, although this one can't... Ah, this one's naked single, I think. It sees three and nine. So maybe that... So maybe that was wrong. Maybe I was wrong to look at the orange dominoes. I should have just been looking at the sort of inside square each time because they see that they, they flick at the corners of the Fistimafel ring and give us more information than I was expecting. I'm just going to double check this one. This definitely can't be one, two. It can't be three. It can't be four. It can be five. It can't be six, 
seven. Yeah, so that's a naked single. Wow. Wow. Okay, so that square up there is not five. Um, so I should check this square with, as a priority, shouldn't I? This can't... That can't be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and or nine. That's a naked single as well. That's an eight. Good grief. Ah, that's nice. So that gets me a seven here, a three here, and an eight there. That three is looks nice because that's given me a four and a nine. Which has given me a three five pair up there. The four is getting rid of fours over on the right hand side of the grid. Um those two squares look like they are a one two pair I think which means these two squares are a seven and a nine and I can write them in that's a seven that's a nine that's a three now three comes out of the top right hand side of the grid this square is I was about to say four but it's not four it's two that's a two so that means there's a two, ah there's a two in one of this these two squares knight's move means it's not this one it would be a knight's move away from its friend. So that's a two, that's a two, that's a one. One must be in one of these squares. So this is a one, seven, eight triple at the top of the grid. Is that not being a one or an eight? So this is a seven. One, eight pair here. Oh, well, let's just use the seven to get the seven and the eight fixed, fixed up. The eight up here is giving me an eight and a one. One lives in one of those two squares. Don't know if we can do it or not. Um, now, come on. How does this 3-5 get resolved? Maybe something over here will help me. Oh, 7 here is seeing this square. So that's an 8. That's a 7. We get rid of 7s from this side. 8s from this side. Can't quite see how to finish that bit off. Um, and where, where should we look now? I'm really not sure what the best, where the best place is to to finish this off. I think we are sort of in the closing, the closing bits. Three, four, seven, and nine into those squares. Let's label them up and see what we can get rid of. We can get rid of threes from these. Squares. Oh, this three is of course ruling itself out. Actually, of all three of those squares. So that's a three. Have we got anything else similar to that going on? Seven is ruling itself out of this square. Nine. Four. Oh, <laughs> Bobby, I can't see how to do it. All right, let's look at this box. One, two, four, and nine. Now, can we get rid of anything? And this 9 sees that square. The 1 sees this square. Ah, ah, let's come back to this 2x2 two two at the top. Because 4 in that 2x2 two two has to be in those two squares, which means you can't put 4 in either of these two squares. If you try and put a 4 here, you rule a 4 out of both of those two positions. So this is... Oh, it's, it's collapsed. There you go. 1, 2 pair in row 4. That square's got to be a 9. That means this is a seven, this is a six. I've now got an eight, nine pair down here. This might, as it collapsed, that's no longer a four. I've got a one, two, oh, I broke, no, I haven't. That's a seven, so this is a nine. This is a four, this is a seven. Okay, I thought I might have broken it, but I think it is still, it is still going which is good. This is a four, five pair, there's a five here. So that's a five, that's a four, that's a five, that's a four. Those two squares are ones and nines. Oh, come on. What's... I see the six is doing the work, isn't it? Six, one, one, nine. Everything gets done. This one reaches in here, gives me a two and a one. That makes this a one, this a two, this a two, this a one, this a four. That's a five, that's a six, that's a three, that's a four. That's a three, that's a five. And hopefully that's an eight and that's a nine. And that is how to do a very, very beautiful puzzle indeed. Um, so we did, a, we did a few puzzles today and I hope you enjoyed that. Um, but that was a very, very interesting debut. The, 
I didn't use Fistemafel, did I? I did not use Fistemafel, so I did not have to prove that those squares were the same as those. I'll leave that as an exercise, well, not just that those, but the same as all four corner squares. So if you are interested in that, we've done lots and lots of videos on it, but hopefully you will find, if you investigate it thoroughly, that these 16 cells are indeed the identical 16 digits you'll find in the two by twos in the corner. But it's just, it's a very, very nice idea that those four squares have to be those, and these four squares have to be those. And from there, we were able, with the knight's move, to plod our way through the puzzle. Enjoyed it mightily. I uh, hope you did too. Let me know in the comments. I do enjoy them, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.